because they said the part, parts of the pot relate to body parts. And, you know, you could ask, you know, where do you think the mouth is on this jar? Where do you think the, um, the foot is? And, you know, they're all, their body parts. And, and also, this, we do want children to have some choice um, when, they're, when they're making their pot. And as you saw, that it is a vol volume crater that Maury is going to demo. But there might be other children who have worked with clay that want to try a different shape. And this is a great reference for that. Mm -hmm. And the, I think the other important thing to say is while this whole theme is really about ancient Greek civilization and its influence on us today, and as Maury said, pot we're using pottery as the entry, but I think you can really ask kids, why, why is it important to study this pot pottery? Why is it important to know about? And Really, I think the idea is to, to begin to learn through the pottery what ancient Greek life was like. Because as you'll see, we'll get into the designs that start coming on this pottery that really gives us give us um, clues and information about how they lived daily life, how they practiced religion, um, mythology that was so important to them, etc. Right, and when we were we went to the Met together then as a group and. Um, there were a couple of docents coming through the Greek pottery, and so we were lurking a little bit and listening to how are they presenting and sharing the information. Because you know it's a very complex subject, and one of the docents said, "A Greek pot is like a storybook to the past." And you know it's not really a storybook, but in some ways it is, and it's also a record of what happened in history long ago. And um, I, I do think making that connection is like, look, this is what how we found out how they lived, and it's kind of like the book of the past because they didn't have, you know, the Odyssey wasn't written as a book then. The scenes were on the pods, but um, it wasn't written as a book. Yeah, how, how would you communicate sort of the ingenuity of this to the kids? Do you know what I mean? The fact that it was really brilliant mm -hmm. and new and life-changing for, mm -hmm. do, do you know what I mean? Like that's part of what's exceptional about well, it. Well, pottery, I mean, the, the actual making of pots and firing pots is actually pretty old. Um, very old um, technology. Uh, I think what the Greeks did that was, you know, first of all, they, they used the, the potter's wheel, which was innovative. Um, and um, in a certain way, I think the, the main innovative things were the, as, as um, time went on, um, more particular view of the proportions of the, of the pot, and then innovations in decoration. Um, not so much. Not the functionality? I mean, you wouldn't stress that with the kids? Well, right? uh, that you could I travel really, suddenly was, where you couldn't travel before? I wasn't yeah. quite finished. Oh, so, sorry. sorry. Um, so, what I was going to say is um, you know, what you'll be seeing this is that one of the things that you can really trace is the development of the art that goes onto the pot. Um, the, you know, Travel and trade and containers and storage is all something that really comes out of um, the, the establishment of the city in Mesopotamia. So whenever you have a sedentary culture that is collecting grain, collecting um, products of um, an agricultural organized society, you need storage. Um, so, so that's sort of the beginning of it. I think, I think um, what we can say, and this comes up a little bit later, and we're just getting into it, is that the maritime nature of Greek civilization um, and the trade routes that went throughout the Mediterranean, first of all, allowed a lot of um, uh, sharing of technologies, um, uh, artistic motifs, but also the need for durable storage um, vessels. And it's funny because in our dis many discussions about this, Maury kept on saying, these handles changed this pot. These handles changed this pot. It, it completely changed its function. And so, um, you know, it could be tied to a horse. It could be put on a ship. It could be, it, you know, and then it allowed for the trade, which then changed their civilization. But it is an amazing innovation to take a, a container, add a handle, add a foot, and it does change how their whole life led. And I think that's what, like, we're kind of all saying the same thing. Right. So and then the more, another... With the more ancient civilizations, they were just using the pots of storage of grain, but the Greeks were really telling the stories, and it was all 
in the beginning. Right, right. Yeah. And they were also, and then it became an art for, form right. as well. They included the art, which right. then, and then as you see, you're going to see the beginning of the alphabet and writing of their names. Like as we progress through it, you'll see the pots. But another point to make up for this one is we were saying this, these were all done by hand. There weren't machines. That, um, they, she did say that there was the potter's wheel, but it was with a foot press, and um, you know, so it was a simple machine which they study, I think, in third grade. And um, but there was no electricity. There wasn't a thermometer, and it was all made by hand. These were made by people, not a factory, you know. And um, I think uh, let me suggest that we go through all of the um, images because I think some of these questions that you have will probably be answered when we go through this. If, and then at the end we can right. uh, talk about the things that haven't been covered. I think that might be useful. Absolutely, but I just have to backtrack for one second because there's one important thing in the introduction that I think will also touch upon that point that I forgot to say, and that is that you can start the kids, after you give a mini intro or even before, have them think about storage containers in their own kitchens. What kind of containers do you have? Let them answer a couple. What materials are they made of? Metal, glass, uh, and then ultimately, if you can get them to talk about plates and cups, this is and this should all be in two, a minute, two minutes. What do you think it should be a poster? I want to make well, a poster. Well, anyway, a and to be on like. to to make the connection between their plates and cups are made of clay. And these things were made of clay. And why do we have them today? Why is clay so? Why are? Why can we see clay? Clay is durable. Clay is what was around them to use, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, but I think somehow that connection can get made. Okay, moving. Right. Yeah, it can get that, and also the point is it can get so big, so it is hard to like narrow it down because there's so much, you know. <laughs> right. Okay. So this is from the earliest period called the geometric period, which you don't even need to tell them right away. Um, but just start asking them, what kinds of designs do you see on this jar? And you know, let them, let them discover that there are sort of different geometric shapes. And um, I think you can, you can really get into the <coughs> idea of how primitive looking this art is. I don't know if the kids can articulate that, but it's very, it's very simple. It's very... Um, so we've organized them from the oldest ones, right? And yeah, to show the progression, so as you... As you watch these, you're going to see this is how it started, and their drawings, and then it gets more um, complex. Exactly. Okay. And in the geometric period, you you will see a lot of mythology, warriors, etc. Um, here's the chariot, the horse. You know, here's here's a woman. And you can oh, see her breasts, but they're very geometric. This is not important. <laughs> Sorry, this is supposed to go with here. Ah, okay, actually, yeah. our very first, that was from a little bit later in the geometric period, the very earliest geometric pottery you can see just has designs on it. So again, you know, get the kids talking about what kind of design, wavy, curly, um, what does it remind you of? They may say water, waves. Um, and again, you can refer back to the seafaring nature, how they live near the water, etc. And then, as a comparison, and you can keep this one up, you can compare to the terracotta stirrup jar with octopus and kind of have them compare the two, what's similar, what's different. Um, and these two are really among the absolute oldest pots that we're seeing from the very early geometric period where the designs are big and bold and include just geometric figures. Yeah, I thought something like this. This is because we don't have the numbers yet on the back of the posters. Apologies about my own mistake. So then you can get into the little geome the later geometric period where figures are starting to get added, and that's where you see much more um, representations of mythology and warriors, etc. Um, so again, you know, you, you want the kids to sit up nice and close so they can really see and talk about what they see going on in these scenes. Um, what's kind of interesting is that the main story here, which is, this is, it is a funerary crater, you know, and again, younger kids, if you don't want to get so much into the funereal aspect, fine, let them just talk about the geometric shapes. The fact that there are people, oh, somebody's sleeping on a bed. Go with it. It's, it's fine. You don't have to say that this is really a funeral. But, you know, it's kind of interesting that the main story is on the widest part of the vase. Um, and then again, I think it's great for them to compare the two. How has it changed? How has it evolved? You know, does the 
comparing the horse here to the horse on the other. Um, and then something else, so this is not a separate poster, if you, if you feel like really showing